warm salutations from Sovereign Self. Despite the existence of what we call inorganic matter, and of other non-biological states of being, the universe is not half dead, but all alive, as William Walker Atkinson puts it. For the universe is conscious substance in motion. The evolving man or woman of today must at some point come to this recognition, and to its realization, firmly fixing it in his or her individualized share of universal mind. In the practices of self-mastery, personal evolvement, and selfhood, we may rightly refer to this point at hand as a general guideline or an underlying truth. For the life principle pervades the cosmos, and he who does not come to terms with this fact can evolve only so far, and can attain only a corresponding degree of true self-mastery. On the contrary, he who comes to proper terms with it can in consequence evolve and manifest a true self-mastery far beyond his capability otherwise. The advancing student of life thinks, feels, and acts accordingly. He feels that everything is alive. He feels the life in everything and relates with his inner and outer worlds accordingly. He knows the fact of the matter. When you think, know that mind lives. Know that your thoughts and projected mental images are alive. When you handle steel, <clears throat> excuse me, feel consciousness coursing through its molecular structure. If you strike the steel, feel that the emitted sound comes forth as a living response to the striking. When you speak, know that the result of your vocal cord vibrations transmits a living message. Realize right now as you read or hear this text that the universe is conscious substance in vibratory motion, inseparable from the creative life principle itself. Feel the life of space. Such calls to awareness might well go on indefinitely. But what would be the point? For it is not a list of examples or suggestions that is important. Such a list, no matter how inclusive or exhaustive, can give you no more than a flash of relevant recognition. But it is the continuing and growing experience of it, the developing living of it, that is vital. And acquiring the knack of such living it requires practice over time. So every time you feel a flash of such awareness, take a moment if you can to increase your experience of the awareness by prolonging it even just for a moment and by turning up its volume, so to speak, if even just a little. Elsewhere I speak much about mental faculties such as memory, creative thinking, interest, desire, will, imagination, attention, and concentration. <clears throat> I also speak much about mental acts, such as suggestion and telementation, and about the conscious, subconscious, and superconscious phases of mind. And I speak much about universal laws, namely order, sequence, rhythm, analogy, balance, cyclicity, and opposites. Slowly here, you gain a working knowledge of how to put these bits and pieces of information to use in your life intelligently applying each toward the others, all toward your own evolvement as well as that of the species and beyond. But I want you right now to understand that all such comprehension and application takes place in a fully living environment, with no part of that environment being actually separated from any other part. One connected life pervades the entirety. You may and will do influence that entirety. Try to imagine, just to imagine for a brief moment right now, the difference between on the one hand merely mechanically applying the mental faculty of imagination to the law of opposites for any specific purpose, and on the other hand performing the same application with full awareness and trust in the fact of the aliveness of each component of your so doing. That is, the life involved in your imagination itself, and in the law of opposites itself, and in your specific application of the one to the other, and in your will brought to bear, and in everything else thereby brought into play and affected. 
The difference is proportionate to that between a two-dimensional object and a three-dimensional one. Such awareness, so to speak, puts life into the affair and brings it to life for you. The fact, though, is that life was or would have been in it the whole time anyway. The difference, however, being that now you are in conscious personal rapport with it. And that rapport affirms that you are right in the center of the involved life. This gives you much added power. And when you go about your affairs in this way, alongside going about them ethically and as a true individual, a true individual, excuse me, manifesting to even a small extent your realized sovereign self as a center of conscious substance in motion, then you gain bona fide experience of self-mastery in real life. Now at this point, I caution you that the matter here is such an elementary one and is so simple sounding that it is easy to overlook its true importance and thereby also to miss out on its potential impact in your life. And for these and other reasons, it has been overlooked by the main of humanity for a very long while. My going on about it will make no difference if you do not give whatever I do say about it here the attention that it truly requires. Therefore, please give it its due attention, going back over this short text repeatedly, seeking earnestly to suck the marrow out of it and to make it your own. Go back over it, pausing every few sentences and attentively considering the meanings of the words to the point of feeling them. Then willfully submit to your subconscious mind a vow to manifest the matter in your everyday life and instruct your subconscious mind to aid you in said attainment. Do not ever again sell your self short. Life is everywhere, and you cannot master it until you know how to find it, and where to find it, and until you act accordingly. Call it a general guideline, a first principle, a primitive fact, call it whatever you want. That one life pervades and interconnects absolutely everything, and you are a central agent of control and experience in its entirety. Consciously bring that guideline, principle, fact, or whatever you call it, into your study and application of all other instruction in self-mastery and personal evolvement. And you will find that, slowly but surely, this apparently simple thing will bring about a profound change in your way of being. As a popular writer implies, you might even come to hear animals tell you how they feel, or plants tell you how to cure yourself or the dead tell you that right acts do matter. Nature will reveal to you her subtle secrets if you gently seek them with a clean mind and a pure heart. As with all things quite worthy of your while, practice is the key. Subscribe, share, love, and live well.